opportunity to rejoice in the Lord. And there's many more than that, but I'm going to, I'm going to talk about three. As we do this, I'm going to read a psalm or two on that area, talk about it very briefly, and then I'm going to sing a hymn to you. It's going to be a very familiar hymn. It won't be on the board. I'm not going to announce the number. So if you just know it and feel like joining in, you really ought to. If you want to rejoice in the Lord in that way, you have that opportunity. Just join in. And then we'll say a prayer for each one as well. So today is all about rejoicing in the Lord because we have great and ample reason to do so. The first psalm that I want to draw your attention to and the area of life, Joe, you may have to click something for us like Brian usually does. There you go. In fact, I, I may just say next. There's only two more clicks to go. The first psalm that I want to bring your attention to is Psalm 8. And we're going to talk a little bit about God's basic care for mankind as an opportunity for rejoicing in the Lord. And when we say his basic care for mankind, what we mean is how good God is to even the most basic of us. Let's look at Psalm 8. And I'm going to encourage you with these psalms to read along with me. Or to read it. I'll, be, I'll read out loud. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Who have displayed your splendor above the heavens? That's probably not a question. Who have displayed your splendor above the heavens? From the mouth of infants and nursing babes, you have established strength because of your adversaries, to make the enemy and the revengeful cease. When I consider your heavens, the works of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you take thought of him, and the son of man that you care for him? Yet, you have made him a little just a little lower than God, or your translation might say angels. And you crown him with glory and majesty. You make him to rule over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet. All sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the heavens, and the fish of the sea. Whatever passes through the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Amen. Amen. And in fact, I meant to say at the beginning of the lesson, since this is an opportunity for us to rejoice in the Lord, you should feel free to be liberal with the amens and the praise gods and the hallelujahs today. You reminded me. Thank you. Very good. I was thinking about this yesterday, and I've been thinking about it for a while. And when I come home, uh, normally at the end of the work day, I'm still going pretty high speed. But when I turn the corner toward my house, I generally will see my front yard and the trees in my front yard. And I think to myself, yeah, those look pretty good. I've got good things going on. I've got a great couple of trees in my front yard. The grass in my front yard looks great. I should feel pretty good about how things are. And I was thinking about that yesterday as I was sitting on my back patio. I was sitting on my back patio just taking in the canvas that God had laid out before me. Do you all do this too? Do you sit on the back porch or the front porch and just look at what's there? I looked and I saw, first of all, I noticed how comfortable I was. The temperature was fantastic. There was a nice cool breeze. And I had shade over my head. Beautiful trees in the, bra in the backyard that just the wind rustles through them. Beautiful sunshine, blue sky. Clouds, not dark, but just light clouds moving through the sky. Birds flying here and there. Some you might not consider as beautiful. Some pigeons out there, right? But really, they're all great. They fly about and they sing for us. And I have a swimming pool over to the right that adds a nice touch of color as well. 
That will become more prominent in the rejoicing as the season goes on. <laughs> but I just took in that canvas and I couldn't help but think that this is really a, just, you know, of the blessings that God gives to man. He doesn't give anything better than that. There's nobody on this earth that really gets a better blessing than the one you and I have in that respect. If you're a king, if you're a president, if you're a billionaire, whatever you've got for you, whatever great man or woman there is in this earth, the best blessings that God has prepared for his people, he makes available to us all. Now, how many of us, by a show of hands, have that same blessings that I just talked about available to you? Not everybody will. Not everybody will have the nice shade, the tree, the patio, uh, the blue sky. You all get, right? But, but for the most part, I want to see a show of hands. How many have those blessings available to him or her? Yeah, that's right. We have got those blessings. And not all of them. You take and pick uh, what you have. It's tremendous. I, it's amazing what God has made man to have and the blessings that he gives us. I don't know about you, but I take great comfort in the fact that I'm as blessed as I can be when I see those things. Nobody, nobody in this evil world gets more and better blessings than I do or than you do when I see those things. It's fantastic. Let's look at Psalm 128. Beyond the basic landscape of nature, there are some other things that God provides for us. How blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways. I keep saying that as a question when it says who there. How blessed is everyone who fears the Lord and who walks in his ways. When you shall eat of the fruit of your hands, you will be happy, and it will be well with you. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine within your house, your children like olive plants around your table. Olive plants. Behold, for thus shall the man be blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. And may you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Indeed, may you see your children's children. Peace be upon Israel. Beyond the, the beautiful landscape of this world that God has provided for us, he also attends to it and gives us things, not only our basic needs, but things to enjoy. He talked in this psalm about our families, the love of a good woman, the children uh, that sit around the table with you. It's interesting to me that he says they'll be like olive plants around your table. It's usually around the table that I struggle with my children. But, uh, but it works out and we, and we stop and we think how blessed we are to have them. These are great blessings. And beyond that, the food and the drink that we have. God has given these things to us to enjoy. We're very blessed in these things. God, the wealth would not make these blessings better. He blesses us so richly. Like I said, you can join in. There's sunshine in my soul today, more glorious and bright than glows in any earthly sky. For Jesus is my light. Oh, there's sunshine, blessed sunshine, when the peaceful, happy moments roll. When Jesus shows his smiling face, there is sunshine in my soul. There's music in my soul today, a carol to the King. And Jesus listening can hear the songs I cannot sing. Oh, there's sunshine, blessed sunshine, when the peaceful, happy moments roll. When Jesus shows his smiling face, 
There is sunshine in my soul. There's gladness in my soul today. And hope and praise and love for blessings which he gives me now. For joys laid up above. Oh, there's sunshine, blessed sunshine, when the peaceful, happy moments roll. When Jesus shows his smiling face, there is sunshine in my soul. We're going to pray now, and I'm going to disturb you a little bit, because as we pray... I'm going to ask you to be like those weirdos that you see on TV, right? That raise their hands during songs and prayer. I'm going to invite you in the same way, when you come across a blessing that you want to rejoice in, when you hear that in the prayer, when you've got that blessing as well, just raise your hand as well from the audience. Just in, in a confession to God that I'm part of that prayer too. I can rejoice. And if you feel like you don't have that blessing, pull that hand right back down. And then raise it again later. But I'm going to invite you to do that during these prayers today. Let's pray. Our holy and righteous Father in heaven, we are very blessed by you. And we realize, as the psalmist said, that we are not much in comparison to the works of your hands when we consider the universe and the sun and the moon and the stars and all the beauty that you have put upon this world, the mountains and the valleys and the oceans and the rivers and every animal that creeps upon the earth or swims in the sea or flies in the air, what are we that you take thought of us? But indeed, you have made us great. You have put us in a prominent position. You have given us great things. Father, you give us great food and drink to enjoy and to make our hearts glad, to make our faces glisten. You have blessed us so much. Father, you give us husbands and wives and children and parents and uncles and aunts and cousins and grandchildren and all sorts of family in order to build ourselves up, in order to more greatly understand the love that you have for us and just to make our hearts happy in general. Father, you have made this world beautiful. You have given us houses to live in and you have let us all sit in security under the shade of our own tree as it says happened during the days of Solomon. How, how great you have made things for us, Father. Father, we rejoice in all these blessings that you have provided for us. We rejoice greatly before you. How blessed is your name. Praise your name, God. We pray these things in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Hit the next one, Joe. There we go. a rosy picture I painted for us, right? Things are pretty good. And they are. Things are pretty good. We have to think about that. But I'm, I'm very well aware that there are hard things too. There are some people not here today because they are struggling greatly. And we look around and see them and most of us knew who they were going to be before we even came here. And there are people here who have struggles also. We have very real struggles and burdens in this life. Let's look at Psalm what I have, 13. How long, O oh Lord? Will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart all the day? How long will my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Enlighten my eyes or I will sleep the sleep of death. My enemy will say, I have overcome him. And my adversaries will rejoice when I am shaken. Indeed, there are real burdens in this life. But, it says, but I have trusted 
in your loving kindness. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. He has given me a great bounty. We would understand that to say. We don't get all of those things all of the time that I talked about. And on top of that, even when we do, we have burdens on top of that. When it comes to family, we don't always get the husband or the wife that we would like to have. We don't always get children, though we may cry to God for those children. And sometimes the husband or wife we have, we would prefer not to because they're a problem. And the same for children. I tell my kids every day that I'm proud of them, and that's true. I'm proud of you guys. But we're very also very well aware of the real life situation that children can grow up to disappoint their parents. And there can be problems there, and parents disappoint their children, and families in general can let us down. We don't always have good families here on this earth. What we're most well aware of from a burden perspective right now, here, are the health concerns that we have. The infirmities of age in particular. Some people get Alzheimer's, some people get Parkinson's, some people get both, some people get things that look like that, some people fall and break hips, some people get cancer, some people just generally fall apart. We, we get all sorts of infirmities, and it's not restricted to the age. The youth are beset with infirmities as well. We have, we have all kinds of things. When it happens to our youth, it really brings us down. There are, there are sicknesses with children that sometimes we don't get to fix. There's real poverty in this world. I mentioned how even the billionaires don't have anything over us when it comes to those blessings earlier. But there are people in this world who are so poor that they don't even have those things. That they're just sick in a shack in the dirt field. Right? There is real poverty in this world. And it can make it and it can make things difficult and there's injustice as well. There are all these sorts of things that let us down. But what but what we know, what we know about these burdens from our experiences, from the experiences of our family, from the experience of those around us, is that burdens and seemingly overwhelming burdens and problems that you don't see a solution to go away. Or they're eased, or they pass, and sorrow can be replaced by joy. I'm wondering here, and I'll ask the group, is there anyone who can test to the truth of that statement? Is there anyone who has times in their life where they've had overwhelming sorrow, overwhelming burdens, that you didn't know how those things would pass, and then you woke up one day and realized it was better, and God had replaced it with joy? I see those hands again. Were there people who can testify to the truth of that? Very good. I'm glad that you've seen that. These things happen as an example for our learning that this is really what's happening in the long run. It happens here so that we know that God is taking all of our burdens away. Some burdens last a long time on this earth and some don't. But God is taking all of our burdens away. Our burdens are quickly passing away, and they're passing away to be replaced with an eternal weight of glory, so much so that the, the burdens won't even be worthy to be remembered. We can rejoice, like Paul says he did, we can rejoice even in our afflictions, because we know the glory that they are creating for us, that God has awaiting for us. Therefore, we can rejoice in our afflictions. You all know this song as well. I'd like to stay here longer than man's allotted days and watch the fleeting changes of life's uneven ways. But if my Savior calls me to that sweet home on high, I'll live with him forever in glory by and by. 
Oh, yes, I'll live in glory. By and by, I'll tell and sing love story. There on high, there with my dear Redeemer, no more to die. Oh, yes, I'll live in glory. By and by. I want to be of service along this pilgrim way and lead the lost to Jesus as fervently I pray and to, uh, to Jesus. I'll keep him ever nigh and live with him forever in glory by and by. Oh yes, I'll live in glory. By and by, I'll tell and sing love story. There on high, there with my dear Redeemer, no more to die. Oh yes, I'll live in glory. By and by. The end I know is nearing, by faith I look away, to yonder home supernal, the land of endless day. Cling to him forever, and look beyond the sky, and spend the endless ages in glory by and by. Oh yes, I'll live in glory. By and by, I'll tell and sing love story. There on high, there with my dear Redeemer, no more to die. Oh yes, I'll live in glory. By and by. It was interesting to me looking at the verses of that song today. It takes you through three stages of life. Youth what we call middle age or the prime of our lives, and then toward the end of our lives as well. The third, the third verse is, is uh, for us older folks, right? Um, let's go to God in prayer. Same thing, same thing with the hands. If you've got something that you can rejoice in the Lord in. Father, we come to you again with real burdens and real afflictions in our life. Without naming all the people that have these afflictions, we all generally know because we know them in the announcements and we pray for them and we know the afflictions that we have and we don't come before you to mourn right now, but we come before you to rejoice in our afflictions. We rejoice, Father, in our sicknesses. We rejoice in the, the sicknesses of old age. We rejoice in the struggles of Alzheimer's or Parkinson's. We rejoice in the struggles associated with broken bones. We rejoice in the struggles associated with caring for those of our number who are sick. We, we rejoice in the trials that are created by uh, mental illnesses. We rejoice in the trials that are, that are created by genetic disorders. Father, we rejoice in the trials that we have uh, from family or from, from losing loved ones or from not having the things that we want in this world. We rejoice from the trials that we have and injustice and, and mocking by those who are in the world who do not believe in your Son. We rejoice in the trials that we have from poverty, Father. We do not all have um, the things that we want and we rejoice in the trials that our, our brothers and sisters in places like Uganda or the Philippines have as well. We rejoice in all our struggles, Father, and the reason we rejoice in them is because we know that you have made them just temporary. And though they seem long here, Father, we rejoice and we are glad because in the blink of an eye, these things are passing away. These things are passing away, but you have created good things for your children. You are creating an eternal weight of glory for us. There is a new body waiting for us. There is a new home waiting for us. You have made us your children, and fathers care for their children. Father, we rejoice in these struggles that we have, and we ask you, Father, that you would grant strength and comfort to those who are enduring them, that you would grant them strong faith and that they would put their hope in you and that they would watch for you, Father. May you be greatly praised in heaven and earth. In your son Jesus' name we pray, amen. One more area next that we want to talk about and that is the forgiveness of sins. Of all the things that we could rejoice over, that's pretty high on the list. Let's look at Psalm 32.
How blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. How blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. When I kept silent about my sin, my body wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My vitality was drained away as with the fever heat of summer. I acknowledged my sin to you, and my iniquity I did not hide. I said, I confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore, let everyone who is godly pray to you in a time when you may be found. Surely in a flood of great waters they will not reach him. You are my hiding place. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with songs of deliverance. It says, I will instruct you. I think this is David speaking to us. I will instruct you and teach you in the way which you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. And then here's the instruction he provides. Do not be as the horse or as the mule, which have no understanding, whose trappings include bit and bridle to hold them in check. Otherwise, they will not come near to you. Many are the sorrows of the wicked, but he who trusts in the Lord, loving kindness shall surround him. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you righteous ones, and shout for joy, all you who are upright in heart. Forgiveness of sins. I'd ask if you have it. I had this written down to say, do you have guilt or shame in your, your life? But I know that you do. You have guilt and shame in your life if you've been around at all. I'm not going to ask anybody to confess anything here in front of everybody. But how many, if we asked for a show of hands, if you think about the great sin of your life, if somebody, if somebody were to ask or if you were honest in your heart and said, is there a sin in your life that comes to the forefront of your mind that above all other things you may have done in this life, you might say, I really wish I hadn't done that. Would you have one of those? Do you have one in your mind now? We're not taking confessions right now. You can pray to God later. <laughs> but, um, or we'll take confessions later. But that's the point. We have guilt. We have shame. We have, in our lives, we've been thieves and um, idolaters and fornicators and drunkards and liars and unkind and disrespectful to parents and all those same things that you're going to find in Romans 1, right? We have those sins. We have those sins in our life. And we stand guilty. And yet somehow, by the amazing righteousness of God, he washes it away. I've said before, I don't know how that math works. I don't know how the blood of Jesus can be so innocent and so righteous that it can wash all of our sins away. And leave us justified. But it does. God says that it does. And there's nobody else that we have to stand in front of. Except God to answer for our sins. And he says the blood of Jesus can just wash our sins away. How blessed it is. And how much we should be rejoicing in the Lord. That that shame and that guilt doesn't have to go with us. Look at Psalm 130. Out of the depths, I have cried to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, Lord, should mark iniquities, that is, if the Lord was up here just writing our iniquities on the wall, and you don't know most of my iniquities, and I don't know any of yours, I don't think. But if our thoughts were laid bare in front of God as they are, and God were to stand up here and just write our iniquities down in front of the judgment seat, it says, who could stand? None of us. None of us could stand. 
I don't even want to be in that room with my sins on the wall. But there is forgiveness with you that you may be feared. I wait for the Lord. My soul does wait. And in His word do I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than the watchman for the morning. Indeed, more than the watchman for the morning. Who has ever been a security guard or a police officer or had a shift in a military regiment where your job was just to stand and be awake at night and watch out for things? Who's ever had that job? Is there anything that you watched for more than the morning? It just can't get there soon enough. There's nothing for you to do. You're just tired because it's nighttime. And the only thing that can happen to you is the bad thing. That's how bad you want the morning to get there. And in this case, that's what David says. That's how much he waits for the forgiveness from the Lord. Indeed, more than the watchman for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for the Lord, for with the Lord there is loving kindness, and with him is abundant redemption, and he will redeem Israel from all his iniquities. Is it for me, dear Savior, thy glory and thy rest? For me so weak and sinful, oh, shall I be so blessed? O oh, Savior, my Redeemer, what can I but adore? And magnify and praise Thee, and love Thee evermore. Is it for me Thy welcome, Thy gracious entering? For me Thy come, ye blessed, for me so full of sin. O Savior, my Redeemer, what can I but adore? And magnify and praise Thee, and love Thee evermore. O Savior, precious Savior, my heart is at Thy feet. I bless thee and I love thee, and thee I long to meet. O oh, Savior, my Redeemer, what can I but adore? And magnify and praise thee, and love thee evermore. I'll be with thee forever, and never grieve thee more. Dear Savior, I must praise thee, and love thee evermore. O oh, Savior, my Redeemer, what can I but adore? And magnify and praise thee, and love thee evermore. Let's pray again. And no one open your eyes to see who's raising their hands for particular sins. <clears throat> so we'll go fast so that, that doesn't happen. Our holy and righteous Father in heaven, Father, we praise your name and we rejoice again. And you have given us so much cause to rejoice, Father, in the blessings of this world. And even in our tribulations we can rejoice. And above all things, Father, we rejoice in the forgiveness of sins. You have washed our sins away. You have made us righteous. And though we are guilty of all things, Father, uh, that you have written, though we have become liars and thieves and lawbreakers and disrespectful to parents and malicious and gossips, and idolaters, and adulterers, and fornicators, and homosexuals, and strikers, and brawlers, and, and fighters with brethren, and though we break man's laws and your laws, Father, yet you have offered us forgiveness of sins. You have offered us the blood of your son Jesus. And how is it that, how is it that one man's blood, Father, and, and your son's blood, and I suppose that's the answer because it was your son's blood and his righteousness that washes us away from all sins. 
or washes our sins away from us. Father, we rejoice in you. We rejoice that you have turned us from garbage into your children. You have justified us and you have made us to stand before men and before angels in heaven and even before you, Father. You have made it possible by the blood of your Son, Jesus, to stand in your presence. And we will stand in your presence one day, Father, as we love you and we believe in you. Father, we rejoice in you this day. We rejoice in the forgiveness of sins that you have given to us. Praise your name, Father, how great you have made things for us. And praise your name for the lot that you have given to us that we have found forgiveness of sins by your Son. In his name we offer this prayer. Amen. Amen. Do we indeed not have great cause to rejoice in the Lord? Indeed, we have great cause to rejoice in the Lord. You can say, praise the Lord with me one time. Praise the Lord! Because we have so many things that have been given uh, to us and that God has just reached out and just showered blessings upon us. It's so tremendous. Uh, thank you for your time this afternoon. Uh, we're going to sing a song in a moment. Uh, go ahead and go to the next slide there. We're going to sing a song in a moment. 325, I am resolved. We're going to sing this song. And we're going to give an opportunity for any who want to come forward. And we're going to offer three reasons why you might come forward. Uh, two of them you'll know right off the bat. The first reason we offer that you might want to come forward is because maybe you want to be a Christian. Maybe you want to take Jesus into your life. Maybe you're ready to do that. Maybe you're ready to be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins and to name the name of Jesus and to be saved. That's the first reason you might come forward. We'll stop everything we're doing right now and go make sure that that happens if you're ready for that. The second reason that you might want to come forward is because maybe you do have sin in your life that you've confessed to God and maybe you want to confess it to God before your brethren and want their prayers as well. We're willing to do it. Not everybody has to do it that way, but occasionally some people like to, and you're welcome too. But the third reason you can also come forward is we're told to rejoice with those who rejoice. If you have something great going on in your life and you just want to come forward and ask the congregation to rejoice with you in it, we'll take your confession of rejoicing and we'll all praise God with you. So there are any of these three things that if you want to come forward and you want help, we can help with that. Because the altar of God is open. It's been opened by the blood of Jesus. The altar of God is available. And we make it available to you at this time uh, as we stand and sing the song that's been selected. Do what he will, he is the living. 